Hey guys, welcome to the Animation Movies Recapped. This is David with you. In today's video, I will be going through a 2019 French computer animated adventure comedy film called Chicken Hair and the Hamster of Darkness. I like the movie very much and hope you will like too. So without any further ado, let's start with the recap. 20 years ago, these two adventure brothers named Peter and Lapin went on a particular quest to find the mystical hamster of darkness. Upon their arrival at an entrance to the cave, Lapin tells Peter he regrets bringing him along because he could have found the treasure alone. But as he takes a step forward he releases a booby trap that heads for his face. Luckily Peter saves him by pulling him back and reminding him of his importance on the quest. As the two keep moving, they keep avoiding traps and various obstacles until they see the treasure. Peter then warns Lapin about the quest seeming too easy and advises him to not touch the treasure yet, but stubbornly Lapin ignored him and carried it. On doing so, the treasure turns to dust and the cave starts to collapse. Although the brothers manage to escape alive, Lapin is frustrated thinking he couldn't retrieve the treasure to prove to everyone he could do it. So, Peter tries sympathizing with him. Then they hear a noise from a boat, and they later find out it is a baby hare that has chicken feet and feathers. Lapin who is insecure about his broken ear thinks the baby is laughing at him, but the baby was just innocently laughing. Intrigued by the baby's unique features, Peter decides to adopt him as his son since he had been abandoned in the forest. Lapin, however, disagrees with this decision and tells his younger brother he can never be king because he is too soft. Fast forward to the present, Peter is the king of the village and his son who he named Chickenhair is a prince. Peter raised him, telling him tales of his adventure stories. So Chickenhair grew up always wanting to be like his father, a great adventurer. Right from a certain young age, Chickenhair watched as his father would go on trips and quests to return with different treasures and artifacts. But the best part for him was seeing the villagers hail and praise his father. It is the celebration the villagers did in his name that made Chickenhair decide from a young age that he too would be an amazing adventurer. From that day, Chickenhair read every single adventure book in the town library. Full of life and dreams, Chickenhair read every night about adventure. He even trained day and night for this particular tryout called the Royal Adventure Society Tryouts, which he always watched every year to become an adventurer. One day, Chickenhair was invited by his father to watch the tryouts with a few of his peers. On his way there, he overhears them mocking him for having chicken feathers. They even called him a weird loser. So from that day, Chickenhair became very conscious and insecure about his feathers. He even started wearing disguises to cover his chicken features. After the tryouts, his father was talking with a friend while going upstairs when he sees Chickenhair with the disguises, he tries talking him out of it, and reminds him his features make him special, but Chicken Hair explains to his father that he can never understand what it means to be abnormal. After Peter decides to leave Chicken Hair, believing he would grow out of wanting to wear disguises. A few years later, Chicken Hair becomes of age for the tryouts, but he unfortunately still wears the disguises. When the tryout begins, Chicken Hair was the first to perform, and he failed woefully as a result of his disguises that kept weighing him down from performing some tasks well. Feeling down and sad, Chicken Hair gave up that night after hearing his father say he cannot perform in the tryouts because the rule of the match says that each person gets one chance only. Later on that night, his father reminds him of his feathers being a gift and not an abnormality. He tells him that the most special treasure he found in all his years of adventuring was him. The next day, he woke up undeterred and decided to search for the Hamster of Darkness, the one treasure adventurers have tried for many years to retrieve but have not been able to locate it. He believes he can find the treasure because he has read every single book on adventures, so he should be able to locate it. Plus he wants to get it to prove himself as an adventurer that the Royal Adventurers Society would love to have. So he goes to the town library to read it but finds out his uncle Lapin was the last person who checked it out, so he has to go collect it from him. Meanwhile, his uncle Lapin was arrested three months ago for trying to kill his father for being king. Lapin is still pissed that his father didn't deem him worthy of being king and crowned his younger brother as the ruler instead of him. When Chicken Hair gets there, he is taken by the prison guard to the special underground cell. The guard explains to him that his uncle is very mischievous, so he should not get too close to him, or else he would find something to him to escape. Then he put him on the track to the cell but leaves him because he too was afraid of Lapin. On getting to his cell, Chicken Hair explains to his uncle that he needs a book that he took from the library some months ago. Lapin gets the book from his shelf and throws it on the ground claiming to be too old to pass it to Chicken Hair thereby making Chicken Hair stretch forth for the book. While doing this his hat falls off and his sly uncle plucks a feather from his head. Then Lapin picked up the book and refused to give it to Chicken Hair anymore, telling him he was a freak that should never have been adopted. Lapin started telling Chicken Hair how he always wanted to read different books in the library, but they were always checked by him. So, he decided he wouldn't give Chicken Hair this book as payback. Feeling lost and unaccomplished, Chicken Hair went back home to sleep. 
Later that night, Lapin uses the feather to open his cell and even open that of his goons and escapes with all of them. They began their search for the mystical hamster of darkness. By morning, news had reached the king that Lapin had escaped so he went to the prison for clues on his whereabouts, only to see his son's feather there as proof he visited Lapin the previous night. He scolds Chickenhair for disobeying his orders and not visiting Lapin because of how evil he is. A disappointed Peter resolves to travel to find his brother with the clues left behind by his guards and although Chickenhair wanted to tag along to help, his father denied his requests and travels with his guards. As Chickenhair is left all alone in Lapin's old cell, he started connecting the dots and realized the true location of the artifact and realized his father was traveling in the wrong direction. He wanted to inform him, but they had already set sail, and it was too late. So he decided to venture on the adventure alone to get the artifact before his evil uncle. But he asks his tortoise servant Abe to follow him, and he agrees. So, they start their journey. On the other hand, one of Lapin's goons a bird, informs Lapin that his nephew did not fall for the trap, but is, in fact, following them to get the artifact. So Lapin resolves to hire an old friend who is one of the most ruthless animals ever. The old friend, however, is a father now and joins the crew with his baby boy, so Lapin is worried he may have gotten soft. Chicken Hair and Abe, on the other hand, arrive at a desert city and discover they need a guide to pass through the desert of death. They enter a bar and announce they require a guide. A skunk introduces herself but another animal convinces Chicken Hair that she is a fraud and shows her a well-known rat guide. While discussing with him, they are intercepted by two of Lapin's goons. The pair is saved by the skunk who they previously ignored in the bar. She introduces herself as Meg and agrees to help them find the treasure for free because she's usually deserted because she is a skunk. Throughout the journey, Meg keeps talking about various things. She even expressed her feelings about Chicken Hair's name. She said she felt it was weird that he is named Chicken Hair. She could see the hair parts but could not see the chicken parts at all. She helped them dodge various deadly things in the desert easily. Consequently, Lapin is discussing with his goon about keeping his baby quiet or firing his ass. The goon explained he needed the money to help his family, but Lapin did not care, hence he dismissed him. Then another of his goons informs him that Chicken Hair survived the desert of death. He becomes furious and asks his goon to break the bridge so they would have to turn around. When Meg and the rest get to the bridge, they realize the bridge is not there anymore because Lapin had broken it to delay them. They couldn't walk on the sand as well because it is quicksand, and if they were to turn around, it would take them a week to get to the other side. Chicken Hair then explained he didn't have a week because his evil uncle might get to the artifact and spread his evil by that time. Chicken Hair is determined as ever, then convinces Meg they could walk through the quicksand. She gives in, and they start, but Chicken Hair gets stuck in it, and as Meg and Abe try pulling him out of it, his boots get stuck in the quicksand. Meg pulls him with all her might and he gets out of the quick mud but without his boots. While on the move in a bamboo forest, Meg starts to exclaim with excitement over how lucky Chicken Hair is to be his species, and how nice it must be to be unique and have an amazing feature. She starts asking him if he can fly like chickens do but the prince annoyingly tells her no and explains to her that his features are weird and abnormal and tells her he wants to be normal, and not be called a freak. Shocked by these words, Meg tries to talk to him when they get captured by a trap and are hanging from a tree. As she tries to examine the situation to decipher the best form of escape, they get shot tranquilizers by a bunch of piggas, which are tribal pig-like creatures. These little animals think chicken hair is a god, so they take him to their land to meet their ruler, who explains to the trio that he would sacrifice them to the volcano god the next morning but he would throw a feast this night in honor of their presence. The feast goes well, but after the feast, they are locked up in cages high above the ground. Then Chicken Hair starts blaming his misfortunes on his appearance and his body. Meg instantly snaps him out of it by telling him a neighbor story about her as a kid. She always loved to make friends, but never quite had success in that area because she was always bullied and isolated for being a skunk. She was always very embarrassed about it. One day when they were stuck in a museum and everyone panicked including their teacher, she farted, and it opened the door, thereby saving everyone thanks to her being a skunk. And ever since that day, she embraced her skunk nature, so she encouraged Chicken Hair to do the same. Out of nowhere, Chicken Hair gets an idea of how to escape their cages. They managed to escape their cages but while leaving, Chicken Hair decided that he wants to get his jacket from their ruler. When getting it, he woke the ruler up, and they were chased by the piggas once again. But this time around, Chicken Hair took them to safety because he wasn't wearing the disguises that slowed him down every time. 
from the Pigas village, they escaped to the Frosty Mountains. Lapin on another note heard about his nephew's recent success with passing the Pigas village, so he decides to sabotage their efforts by releasing an avalanche that would possibly kill him and his friends. But it bounced back, and the avalanche came for him and his crew instead of Meg and the rest. The trio watched the avalanche come down and assumed Lapin and his crew were killed there. Undeterred about it, the trio continued their quest until they got to the icy cave and entered. They faced a lot of challenges where they almost got crushed by spikes but were saved by Chicken Hair who remembered a quote from a book he once read. So, he pushed a hair painting on the wall, and it instantly stopped trying to crush them, leading them to an icy section. In this section, a big ball of ice or metal started rolling towards their direction. So they all started running but Chicken Hair then recognizes a sculpture from one of the books he has read and tells Meg and is able to stand still in front of the sculpture with him. They do so and the obstacle chasing them rolled away and the sculpture opened itself reveling another pathway go another challenge. Chicken Hair solves the last challenge easily. The trio discovers the true artifact hidden in the icy tomb of the long extinct hamsters, a scepter with a glowing shard of ice embedded in its top. However, Lapin and his crew arrive on the scene and imprison Mag and Abe, while Lupin goes to take the scepter from Chicken Hair, telling him he would throw his friends off to the lid if he didn't give him the scepter. Knowing full well how heartless his uncle Lapin is, Chicken Hair gives in and hands the scepter over to his uncle. But he deceived him and threw his friends into the pit, leaving them stranded in the temple. Then Lapin uses the scepter's power to call forth the ghosts of the long dead hamsters to take over their land called Feather Beard. Meg then reminds a depressed chicken hair how his unusual features led them to the temple, so she advises him to tap into that energy and think of a way out of the icy temple. On hearing her, he taps into his innate ability to fly and saves Meg and Abe. He takes them all out of the icy temple and tries to catch up to Lapin. Back in Featherbeard, Lapin has taken over the kingdom and even got in a fight with his younger brother Peter. That fight ended up with Lapin winning and taking the crown by force thanks to the ghost hamsters. But thanks to the help of Abe and Meg, Chicken Hair manages to get the scepter back from Lapin. But to his surprise he sees that the mice are heading to destroy the scepter. His eyes bulge out after realizing that they only responds to the person who first uses the scepter. However, he then fights the ghost hamsters to get to the Royal Adventure Society testing grounds, where he hopes to drop the scepter into the massive pit beneath the area. But after a long battle with the hamsters, Chicken Hair and his uncle Lapin go one-on-one -on -one for the scepter. They fight on a bridge for a long time, until the bridge collapses and they fall into the pit. Chicken Hair saves his uncle from falling, but his uncle selfishly kicks the prince off, leaving him to die. While doing this, the rope he was holding on to burnt as well, so he falls into the pit and doesn't survive. So, Chicken Hair tries to save himself by tapping into his energy and flying out of the pit to the palace, where his father and friends are proud of him for finally being able to be proud of his features and using them to the fullest. With the scepter destroyed, the ghost hamsters disappear, and Lapin's surviving crew members are arrested by the wolf guards. Afterward, Chicken Hair decides to become an independent adventurer alongside his trusted team of Meg and Abe. Peter hugs his son and tells him how proud he is that he finally found himself, and hands him his treasured golden machete as a sign of support. Chicken Hair then joins Meg and Abe on a new adventure across the world. The end. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more good stories like this.